Hey guys, it's Kelly. I am redoing a tutorial that I did a while ago about how to make a very simple journal. It's more like a smash book too, but pretty much whatever you want to use it for. It can be a diary, mini album, whatever you want to do. But the last tutorial I did was a very, very small video. It was hard to see. So I'm doing this again by request. So this tutorial is uh, based on um, using a Zutter bind it all. It's the only binder I have. So that is uh, what I'm using these measurements for. So to start, you're going to need two pieces of chipboard, and they measure eight and a half inches by six and an eighth inch. So eight and a half inches long and six and an eighth inch wide. I found that this is just a, a really good size, and you, you waste um, the least amount of paper doing this too. And I ran out of really good chipboard. That's kind of cheap chipboard, but um, it definitely still works um, pretty well, actually. So... Um, what you'll need is some plain cardstock, whatever color you would prefer, and then some decorative paper. And the measurements for this, based on the cover measurements that I gave you, the cardstock for the interior pages must be 8 and 5 16 inches long and 6 inches wide. If these measurements are off, you will bind it and it will not be sized correctly so it's real important so write all these measurements down that I'm giving you so cardstock for the interior pages six inches by eight and five sixteenths those would be the inside pages that you will tape or um, glue or whatever adhere your decorative paper to so all the interior pages will be that size the decorative paper measurements are just slightly smaller you can eyeball them if you'd like, but um, measuring them uh, makes for fast cutting. So the measurements for the interior paper are eight and an eighth inch long. It'll focus in a minute. And five and three quarters inches. Okay, so write those measurements down and you just cut it, cut however many pages you would like um, for those measurements and that will be the there's your inside page right there super super simple and then this extra one just adds interest these are the scraps after you cut your cardstock and your decorative paper 8 and 5 16 inches and three and a half inches that is just using up the leftover and then again the decorative paper is 8 and an eighth by three and five sixteenths. And I just think it adds interest to have different size papers in a journal or smash book or mini album. So, um, and this is just the best way I've, I've found to utilize the, the paper that you've cut and waste as little as possible. You don't have to put those in pages. Those make great tags too. Um, so however you wanna use it, you can customize this in so many little ways and make it your own. So I just bought some um, real cheap paper from Walmart, the color box ones. They're they're still really pretty. They're very cheap, very affordable, but um, good stuff. And then I got just plain white cardstock from Walmart as well. It's five dollars for that big stack of twelve by twelve white. And it's pretty thick cardstock. It works out well for this. So and again, you don't have to use white. Use whatever color you'd like. Whatever decorative paper that you would like and now I'm just going to cut a bunch of papers that are 8 and 5 16 inches long and 6 inches wide and the, that will be the base that will be each interior page and you always have that jagged edge when you use that color box paper you know and most paper you know when you tear it you got that little jagged edge there put it in the inside like I'm like I'm doing it here put it on the inside and then it won't get in the way of your pages because it's just I don't know it's a pet peeve of mine it just the jagged edge I don't like it so hold on to that piece that you cut off because that is going to be those thin pages that I just showed you that will turn into that okay so hold on to those and then that piece that you just cut is still 12 by 12 paper so I need it to be six inches so you just cut that at six inches and you've got two inside pages right there no waste
So there it is. Cut it at six. Bam. Two pages. No problem. And then those leftovers, you're going to cut the inside pages at three and a half by eight and five sixteenths. And you're going to cut off that jagged edge at three and a half. And eight and five sixteenths. And again, this is assuming that you're going to use these, these longer pages as pages inside the book. And I like to alternate that in there. Again, it just adds interest. Hang on to that square piece that you um, cut off. Those work great for making pockets in the book. They work great for making tags. You just don't have to waste it. Hold on to them. And you can use those. And if you have a Cricut, you can, you know, cut special tags with them. Very little waste. That one strip right there is pretty much all you're going to waste from the cardstock paper. You'll use every little bit of it in this journal. So then you cut all those pages, your cardstock pages, however many pages you'd like. I'd, I, I found, you know, uh, between a dozen and 16 works out well. So now you're going to cut your decorative paper. And you're going to cut that at eight and an eighth. And I will show you the measurements again here. So guys, I don't want to mess you up. But you want to be aware, too, of the pattern on your paper. Because if there's words on it or butterflies or anything else, you don't want it to be upside down. So be very aware of, okay, how is this going to lay in my book? Is it going to go that way? Is it going to go long ways? If you've got words, you don't want them. You know, it's a portrait style um, book that we're making. So you want to make sure that your patterns all stay portrait style. So north and south on the 8 plus inch paper. Sounds confusing, but once you're doing it, it's really very simple. I think that's 5 and 3 quarters. Ooh, I don't want to. I still, you know what? I've made so many of these. I have to have my templates on the side and keep referring to them. Because I'll still cut it wrong. So just be, just write down the measurements that I give you and um, just keep referring to it just so you don't waste any paper, because once you cut it wrong, darn it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you'll use it scrap paper, but. These are not hard to make. They're very simple. They're just tedious with all the cutting. So that's the interior page, the 8 and 5 sixteenths by 6 inches. And then you're going to stick that right on there. It's 8 and an eighth by 5. And, uh, oh gosh, I can't remember. <laughs> See, I still forget. And I'm doing my voiceover not in my my scrap room. But I showed it to you, so I hope you wrote it down. So 8 and 8 by 3 and 5 sixteenths is what that says there. And that's just the measurement for the inside decorative page. So, and again, my stripes, my patterns, my words, just... Just take a moment before you make your cuts and know how that's going to lay in your book. Measure twice, cut once. And save that little thing because that will go on those little square tags that you held on to. And again, make perfect tags, make cute little um, embellishments on the inside of your book, little pockets, whatever you choose. And I save all those little strips because, again, they can be used um, for decorating on the inside of the book. Oh, on my cutter, it's hard to see at the three and a half. It's kind of funky. Or three and three quarters, whatever that is. Right in that area with the three inches, three and a half inches and above. Right before you get to four, it's hard to read on my cutter.
And then to make those little tags, I just, I spared you all the cutting. You guys don't need to watch me cut things, but I just kind of eyeball those. And all those little squares that are left over, just, I just eyeball it and mark it and cut it and, and mat it and put it on there. And waste very little paper. And look how cute that is. It's perfect. If you're giving it to one of the kids, that's like the perfect size for classmate pictures. If they, if they exchange those. These are really great for Girl Scouts, too, for all the pictures that you take throughout a year. And um, each one of the girls can have one of these books and just keep mementos in them. You can make really cute pockets in there. So Now, I, I like to use my ATG gun for um, just adding my paper for the interior pages. It's it's just my, my adhesive of choice. It It's super fast and simple, and um, that's why I like it. So, but you do not have to use that. Use whatever adhesive you'd like. And again, I think the adhesive is the most expensive part. I'm just showing you that before you tape that down, if you decide to ink the edges of your paper, do it before you glue, before you put the tape the glue on, and before you lay it down. Just make sure you do all the inking of your pages. And I, you know, for tutorial reasons, I did not ink all the interior of the pages. I love how that looks. I think it has an excellent finished look. But um, this is going to be a personalized book for a very cute little girl. And I know she is going to do all her own magic to it. So I did not ink all the inside pages. So here's all my pages done. And I've put them in order in the color patterns that I like mixed together. I'm making sure my butterflies and my patterns are in the right order from top to bottom. That one was upside down. And you can't check this too many times, guys, because if you get them in there and then you bind it, and your page is wrong, you wasted it. You probably just, the only way to fix it is just glue another sheet of paper over it. And so then get them all together, all your interior pages, and know how you want them laid out. Okay. And then you have some choices. Now, you can decide to add these cute little pockets. I'm showing you some examples of what you can do. The options are endless, guys. You can make it however you would like, customize it, and make it your own. But this is one of the options. One of my little leftover squares for my cardstock, I just cut it in triangles. And I just wanted little tiny, little small um, triangle pockets on the corners just to add those cute little tags into. And I just used one of my border punches, my Martha Stewart. I think that, yeah, that's a Martha Stewart border punch. And I just added that little simple decorative element. It took less than 30 seconds. And added it on there, and it's perfect. Now, you can either just glue that down however you would like with your favorite adhesive. Now, some of these pockets... I like to add a little depth too because I like to put some chunky um, tags into some of them or maybe multiple tags into some of them and if you just glue it down you're it's gonna get stuck in there and you're not gonna have a whole lot of room so um, there's a couple options here and I'm gonna show you both and these are again the options are endless for how you're gonna make your pockets but these are just a couple examples just for the sake of the fact that I'm making a tutorial just to give you some ideas so you can lay it out like that, and that's cute to hold, like, it's, it's like little corner photo mats. And you can just stick a photo in there if you're going to do a mini album. I like the foam tape. This is the 3M uh, foam, foam mounting tape. I like it because I can cut it to whatever size I would like, and I use very little of it. So I just cut that down the middle, and I put a very thin strip on each corner edge and that lifts that little pocket up just enough to where I can fit um, a few tags underneath there. had a little extra sheet and I just stuck it back on there. But that lifts it up just a little bit and I've done this many times in my albums um, in the past in videos I've done and it works out really well and you can slide multiple tags underneath there. Super super simple instant pocket. And it's done. So there we go. Very, very simple. Now, if you want to put the corner on the inside, um, what I was doing there is just making you aware that when you bind it, your binding is going to be on the inside. So when you put it through your zutter bind it all, that inside corner 
which is not where I'm putting it, okay? I'm putting them on the outside corner because I don't want the binding to interfere with my pocket. And it will come in, you know, the, the holes wind up getting punched in there and your binding gets in there. So you can still put it in there and I wind up doing that and it works out okay, but it will take away from some of your room in your pocket and it really depends on what you want to put in there, okay? Now this I just use score tape and I, I really like score tape. It holds really, really well. And I put my pocket in there. Now those pockets work out fine too if you don't want to use the foam tape and give yourself that um, extra lip uh, lift that works fine too just tape it down and make however many pockets you would like in there you can do it um, you know before you bind it sometimes it's easier to work with that way now this is where I'm showing you how I cover my um, my chipboard with paper I like to first, now, now the chipboard that I use, because I'm out of my really good heavy chipboard, this is kind of flimsy chipboard, and it's fine, it, it works fine um, for the purposes of what I'm doing here, but but I just use plain white cardstock, and I measured it to where it was like an, in, an inch or so, or just a little bit above, a little bit more than an inch, um, extending past the chipboard, okay? And I'll show you why we do that. There's a lot of tutorials on how to cover chipboard with paper. And this is um, the simplest way to do it. I think it's the simplest way. So I just slap some of that quick drying 3M glue on there. And I like to use quite a bit. Again, it's flimsy chipboard. So the more glue I add and the more paper I add to it, the more meat my chipboard will have. And it'll have it'll just become more stiff. So I like to kind of smear that glue all around so that it um, is evened out because you can kind of see glue lines through paper. It doesn't show up so well in video. but And then I just use my brayer. I turn it upside down so that the glue doesn't get all over my brayer. So just roll it on and keep it as even as possible and get glue all over the place and clean it up. <laughs> It happens, no big deal. You can use score tape, you can use your ATG gun, you know, what whatever adhesive you would like. There's there's lots of options and they all work just fine. So because my chipboard is so cheap, it's curling up a little bit, but I can fix that no problem. So then you cut your corners leaving just a little bit in each um, corner because you're going to fold that paper over. Now I have found that when you're working with that paper you want to just kind of um, you know prepare it to be bent over the edge like that so just folding it repeatedly and just putting a good, good crease in there with your bone folder on the edge seems to work really well. You've probably got some, if you're using the the glue like I did it's going to be a little bit wet, a little bit wet there but this cardstock is actually, you know, it's it's it holds up pretty well. It's really affordable too. So if you're not getting that, you know, it's just simple plain cardstock from from Walmart. I mean, it's five bucks for a pretty big pack, and it lasts for a long time. But anyway, so you just kind of prepare it to go. Okay, you're gonna fold over here, and then you glue it. Now I glued that edge um, first by accident. The, the longer sides, it's easier to fold these over by doing the longer sides first because each little corner there where they where it bends at the tip you're going to have to um, you know crease that really well because you're going to fold it over and I'll show you how that works here in a second so do the long sides first and then you fold the top parts over and you've got just a little bit of, a little bit of extra in the corner that you just prepare with your bone folder and uh, crease it really well and it folds over nice and it makes it uh, just look really really neat and professional there you go Swipe your glue off there, and I don't care that that looks messy because I'm just going to cover it with some decorative paper anyway. So, 
and one more time with my brayer just to even it out. And then I just cover the other side with plain white cardstock. And you don't have to use the wet glue. You, know, you can use your ATG or any other kind of adhesive that you would like. And on the inside pages, I'm perfectly okay with using my ATG. And the, the, the um, I'm sorry, it's not the inside pages, but the inside of my book um, cover and back, I'm okay with the ATG, but I do like to add a little bit of extra glue because that's going to get a lot of wear and tear from opening and closing the book. So just a few more strips of glue works out fine. So there we go. That's either my front or back cover, covered with paper, and ready to add the decorative paper on. And you know what, you guys can mark it, eyeball it, um, however you'd like to do that. There it is. And I did ink the edges with some uh, peeled paint, and I did spare you that. And this is going to be, you know, the front cover of my book. And I added, again, it's going to get lots of wear and tear, so I added um, a good amount of adhesive on there to hold it nice and still. So there it goes. There's my chipboard cover. And then we had to do the back cover. That is the inside of my chipboard cover. Just add some decorative paper on there. Okay, and now here we go again. I'm just going to demonstrate again really quick here. Um, how to cover your chipboard with paper, super simple, an inch beyond your chipboard. The measurements do not have to be perfect. I would recommend an inch because you need enough, enough paper to go over the edge to fold over and then to cover, um, just to give you that little border to put decorative paper on. There's lots of tutorials out there and lots of different ways to cover chipboard. But personally, I just think that this one is the simplest. I think it's the most used too, in my opinion, but. So, and here I go. Again, I'm adding um, the liquid glue because again, it's gonna help thicken up that chipboard, believe it or not. It actually, you know, that's you, know, you smear it on there, and it's it's almost like adding another layer of the cardboard type material for chipboard, and it helps thicken up the more the cheaper, more affordable um, chipboard. And that's what you don't want to do, where um, you get glue on your bear. It's no big deal; you just wipe it off. But that's why I, I turn it over, and I just forgot. You turn it over and even it out, and then you get glue underneath and you just clean it up. It's no big deal. Okay, and there it is. Just push it down in the corners really well because those tend to give a little bit. Cut your corners off. Leave yourself just a little bit of paper. Don't cut it right at the corner or you're going to have a gap there and it won't look right. You need that little bit to fold over to make it have that nice, clean, professional looking um, cover over your chipboard. So, and then just play with it real quick. It only takes an extra second just to kind of prepare that paper to be bent over. Um, depending on the kind of paper you use, if it's too thick, you're going to rip it. 
when you try to bend it. So um, just kind of, you know, it's almost like scoring it, you know, just, just kind of prepare it to be bent over the edge there. And again, do your long sides first. It's so much easier that way. And then see that extra flap right there by my thumb up there? That extra flap is what you need. And you need to work that in with your bone folder and get a good crease so that when you bend the top sections down, and I'm creasing it right there, careful not to rip it. Just prepare that and bend that and get a good crease in there, and then it folds over very nice and looks and looks nice clean lines. You'll really like that. That look. There it is. Get a good crease on the inside and the edge, and then just glue it down. just use my shirt for that. I can't believe I did that. <laughs> okay, so hopefully you guys get that. So covering chipboard is something that a lot of people, if you don't make albums, um, tends to intimidate people and um, you know, it's just a simple fold over thing. So if you've never done it, it's, I mean the first time I did, I was like, how the heck am I going to cover this and make it look nice? So. And here I am just covering the ugly part that is still showing. Ta-da! All done. Super simple. And then adding my decorative paper and then just always be aware guys, just keep thinking, okay, this is the back cover. Where's the binding going to be? Where's the top and the bottom going to be? You know, this is a very simple design. It really did not matter whether it was upside down, sideways, or landscape or portrait. It did not matter to me how this paper wound up on there at first. I think I played with it a little bit, but, but it's really not the end of the world if this was on there wrong. So I inked it and spared you that. Ink the edges with some peeled paint matched well with that paper collection and there is my back so there's the front with the cute little butterflies and there's the back now I got my, my book almost ready and then I just run through my pages again just to make sure my front coincides. All my pages are sitting upright like I like them in the portrait um, format. I added a few real simple pockets in there just to demonstrate for you. And there it is. So I kind of am happy with that layout, but I do like to add some extra pages in there, just blank pages for the kids, because this, again, this is going to a little girl, so I got those in there. So now let's get to binding. So your book tells you exactly how to do it. Exactly how to do it. Um, for, and it says, you know, if you want an eight and, a, eight and a half inch cover, then this is where you put your holes, okay? So I always like to punch my, punch my covers first. And on your, on your Zutter binder law, there are um, settings on there. When you're doing your covers, you want to set it to C for cover. Okay, and that um, gets the sizes right. If you don't punch the cover as cover, your holes are not going to line up and your book will be crooked. Take the time to quadruple check before you punch it. It's worth it. Okay, so just get all your pages punched and first do your, um, your front and back cover. Place it in there firmly, push it all the way down to the bottom. For this size, you're going to count over five holes. Again, your Zutter Bind It All book tells you exactly how to do this, exactly how far to count over. So you put your, your thing to continuous, slide it over to the fifth hole, punch it again, slide it over to the eighth hole. Double count, guys, because if you mess it up, you got to remake that cover and it takes time. So you punch it at five, you punch it at eight, 
perfection. Perfect binding. So there's your covers. And then you just zip through these pages and you start, you know, you can only put so many, so many pages at a time in your bind at all. So again, make sure that you're, you're binding it on the right side of the paper. Constantly be aware of, okay, what is the inside where the binding will be? Your book tells you your interior pages are five and five sixteenths. So this is how you'll do it. You put the setting on your Zutter bind it all to D, I believe it is, for interior pages. I think I show that to you. Mm, I guess I didn't show it. Oh, yes I did. So D for inner pages. Okay. That's what you use for all the inner pages. Place it all the way down, all the way to the bottom. Make sure you're straight and firm. And then slide your Zutter bind it all thing to continuous. Count over five spaces. Punch it again. Do it to continuous again. Slide it over to the eighth hole. Put it back to D for punching it. And there you go. Your book walks you through this, guys, if you have a Zutter bind at all. It'll walk you through it perfectly. If you have a cinch, I'm sure the cinch would come with a book just like the Zutter Bind It All does. So you can follow your book for how you can get that binding in. I like this size myself because, again, when I was learning how to make these, this Zutter Bind It All book was my guide. I had never made it before. I had no idea what I was doing. And I made mistakes. I didn't hold the paper right. My holes were crooked. And I had to redo it. So take the time to make sure it's completely straight in your in your bind at all and straight down and count five and it looks like it's five but double check it guys take the time to one two three four five <laughs> and then again count it to eight because once you miss it you're remaking all those pages and it's not that it's hard it's just a time thing so there, I got all of my holes in place. And it tells you exactly in your book, you're going to need 15 holes. And I just cut my excess off for 15 holes. And then you think, oh my goodness, look, I'm ready. Let's bind it. Let's just put it on there. But don't do that. This is the most important thing. If you remember anything, guys, remember this. Take your back cover. Watch what I'm doing. Okay? There's my front, my back take it, flip it around, and bring it around and put it on top. If you do not do that before you add your binding, your book will not open and close accurately. This is very, very important. Bring your back cover, twist it around, lay it flat on top of your front cover. And then, after you put your binding in, guys, go through each page. Make sure that the that the page went through, that the binding metal, the wire, went through each page. Look, I didn't, and I had no idea until I went through and did my double check. Not only did the back page, but that page missed too. So I missed a hole. And that would have messed up my book. It wouldn't have looked right. So take the time to go through one page at a time and make sure that they all made it through with the wire. The wire went through each, each and every hole. So there I am again, just triple checking because I had no idea that it missed on those last pages. And in my normal checking, I caught it. So definitely do that. Okay, so I'm ready. So I've got my back cover laying on top of my front cover. And the reason you do that is because where those bindings, where that wire comes together needs to be at the back cover. Otherwise, in the middle, your book's not going to close right, it's not going to open right, it's going to be weird. So there, I'm just showing you the um, wires that I use. And I don't like the, the antique brass, but it's all I have. I'm out of the white ones and out of the black ones, so it works fine. It's not a big deal. 
So that's just a spacer that comes with your Zutter bind it all and I have one inch wires that I'm using so you just use the one inch thing and get it nice and snug in there. And this is the tricky part. I recommend that you only do four rings at a time and you, when you have your bind it all, I think it's four or five guys, I can't remember. But once you push that down, you see that front part comes forward? That's what's going to close those rings for you. So, but you need to make sure your wire opens up, okay, and it has like a little bend to it. So make sure that you're straight in there before you squeeze it. And keep it pushed down, not too hard, but and then you'll get a perfect binding every time. Sometimes those get a little skewed. Okay, so there's your binding where it comes together, and now you bring your back cover around and your book is perfect just like that. Okay, if your binding was stuck in between those pages, they wouldn't flip. You see, they wouldn't just slide easily on the wire. It would get stuck on that binding where it gathers together. So it, that's why it's so important that you bring that back cover, loop it around, and lay it flat on top of um, the front cover. Because where the binding meets, it needs to be right there. And there it is. Done. And you're free to embellish, add pockets now, you can add your little tags, you get all your scraps together and make that book your own and get as fancy with it as you'd like. Add however many pockets you'd like. And you're done. Thanks for joining me.